Good afternoon, everyone. This is the Southern Fry Philosophy Podcast. This is Mojo riding in the pilot seat today. Uh, my buddy and special host also on this show, Biggin, is in India this week. By the time that you listen to this podcast, he's probably uh, flying somewhere or riding some rickshaw to work over there. But uh, we'll get into that a little bit later. I'd like to introduce you to our special guest host for the next few weeks here while uh, Biggin is out of the country. Um, his name is Jeremy, and please go back and listen to the episode. Actually, he's been on two episodes uh, dedicated just to him. Uh, we have a libertarian uh, episode called Get, uh, Getting to Know Libertarians, and also uh, an episode with him and his new wife, uh, Getting to Know the Cognans. Um, so please go back and listen to those episodes, but... Here's my guest. I'd like to introduce Jeremy. How you doing? Pretty good. Not as much pizzazz on that one as uh, when Biggins here. <laughs> I, know, I know, man. He's got he's got it down. I, I'm just not uh, I'm not that kind of guy. I guess he so. brings the energy. <laughs> well, does. We're gonna try to match it. That's right. So hopefully, hopefully, do him justice while he's out. So, <laughs> but as as Biggin asks me every week, how you be doing? I'm, you know, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, most of the time, just kind of living the dream, going to work. You know, salt mines. But then you come home and, you know, those uh, those roundabouts up here in Concord, they, we, lo- we love they our kill round- me. We love our roundabouts from here in uh, Charlotte and uh, I guess the metro area. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they've installed those everywhere. I don't know if it we're trying to be more European cosmopolitan <laughs> or... I has- mean, they make sense and I love them. Right. But people don't know how to drive in them. Yeah. We need to, I'm going to go door to door and hand out manuals on how to drive in a roundabout. <laughs> I think most of I think most of my gripes also have to do with driving around yeah. here. Um, but uh, what, what's your biggest thing with a roundabout? So I, this is, I mean, it's the worst. I um, usually am on the phone on the way home, you know, talking through the Bluetooth and just kind of talking to my mom, my wife, whatever, coming up the road and in the roundabout, someone has stopped at a yield right and just stopped in the middle of the roundabout and i just get angry and yell my mom takes it well just sets the phone down for a couple seconds uh-huh. my wife hangs up on me um but i yell for a long time about <laughs> at them because you don't stop in a roundabout right that's now, the number one rule where are, you, where are you originally from uh upstate new york and then virginia okay so the, the new york i'm sure you didn't have roundabouts no not yeah. very many in virginia uh, one or two, I think, yeah. but not very many. Yeah. I, I remember, uh, li- when I lived in Tennessee, uh, right outside of Knoxville, uh, they'd have a roundabout in, in the middle of a cow pasture. Okay. I, I don't know if they were planning for future development right. or something, but, um, it was always in the middle of nowhere. But my biggest gripe with a roundabout, um, is the, the people that, like you said, that don't, don't follow the signs and don't read that. Yeah. Um, but sometimes when I'm with my family, just to aggravate them, I'll, drive the roundabout oh, like 13 times all the time yeah yeah and especially late at night um if it's like you know past midnight there's no traffic i'll, I'll do that and see how fast i can go <laughs> so i like i like burning rubber yeah so. i mean they make sense they make things go faster they're better than stoplights people just got to learn how to drive yeah them. i and they're, they're tiny though you know they're not the big european ones you see um, right. in france or something like that they're i mean they're they're like di- little small disc so yeah um and I, I be honest with you, I don't think in 10 years, I don't think they'll be around because, you know, these uh, big freight trucks and 18 wheelers trying to go around and are crushing all the side yeah, curbs. That's true. So. Yeah. When coming home from work, I have to go through three once I get off the exit because I go through one, down a road, through another one, through right. another one, and then to my, towards my house. Right. So. Well, which ironically live in the same neighborhood, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> um, but also, both of us are, uh, both of us are professing uh, libertarians, I know, so don't, don't hate us both. But, yeah. Um, we haven't drank the Kool-Aid of either one of the other parties. We've drank the purple Kool-Aid. But um, so every time I see one of these roundabouts and see the crushed concrete, I'll look at the tax dollars. Bit. So, <laughs> yeah. But um, so that, so that's your gripe. That is. It's, it's uh, enough about me. How you be doing? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm great. Uh, I, for those listeners who may be just turning in for the first time, just t- taking a test episode, um, my story is on episode one, had a heart transplant 11 months ago, almost, on, almost back to a year now. And, um, so I had spent the whole day in the hospital and going test the other day, which is a, a ball of, a ball of joy. Yeah. I'm so, sure. um, but you know, I get to visit with my favorite, uh, nurses that basically saw me naked for almost two months and, uh, 
brought me food. Yeah, and, we're there at your lowest. And gave me pain meds crushed yeah. up in my stomach, so, <laughs> which were awesome, but I got to go see them. But, you know, the other, the only gripe I have, and I, I think this is pretty much universal now mm-hmm. uh, across the country, um, is mullets. Yeah. Like, um, can we just officially, like, I, I, you know, I'm not big on executive orders, but I really wish uh, Trump would actually make an executive order to ban mullets. You know, I mean, if he did that, we'd lose a lot of business here in uh, Concord with the with NASCAR. That's, <laughs> you know, I, I, you may have a point there. So, but still, though, it's uh, I actually saw a guy dressed up today, in um, he had pink uh, pink salmon colored shorts, um, a pair of the Sperry boat shoes, right, right. a polo, and then he was rocking a mullet. <laughs> so. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a fashion icon myself, you know. I pretty much just a dark T-shirt and jeans. But the old, uh, the old mullet, I look like he's just came from a frat boy party. <laughs> it's kind of not tripping that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, that's so. pretty funny. But uh, yeah, and mullets, uh, it's kind of universal haircut. I guess there is no uh, sexual gender that you can assign a mullet. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, when they do, uh, have you ever done Speed Street Bingo? When uh, Speed Street comes to no, town, I haven't. I haven't. So they you know usually come up with a bingo board and you check them off as you see things and i swear a quarter of the board is always something about a mullet oh really mullet family mullet mom mullet dad just go to walmart any yeah. given night uh walmart bingo is pretty much it's the same board <laughs> if we're being honest yeah people of walmart when that website came out was just uh, iconic so yeah, i, I think i cruised that website more than i did some of the other websites yeah, i can't mention sure. so but <laughs> As we said, um, this is the Southern Fry Philosophy Podcast. Uh, please go on to iTunes, um, subscribe, give us a rating. Also go to Google Play, uh, give us a rating. We're also available on Stitcher. I'm trying to get us up on the SoundCloud. Um, some people have demanded us that we go on SoundCloud, so I'm working on that. But please go check that out. Check out our website at www.southernfriedphilosophy.com. Also on uh, Twitter and uh, Instagram, SFP Radio. You can also check us out on Facebook at Southern Fry Philosophy. But the biggest thing is, like I said, please share our episodes. We are uh, right now. We're trending. Our episode counts are going up, but we'd also like to, you know, entertain or entertain your neighbors and your friends. So please go share our episodes um, as you see fit, and uh, go back and listen to some of our catalog. We have some really good episodes. Um, like last episode, we interviewed Mason Weaver, who is a national uh, guest from Missouri, who has been on Fox News. And this week, I'll let Jeremy tell you about our new, our special guest this week. Yeah, uh, Biggin uh, pre-recorded a, an interview um, before he left. He wanted to get one more in um, with Lenny the Band, based out of Concord, who actually recorded our intro music. Um, so we get to hear their uh, their journey chasing their dream um, in music. Yeah, the two band members are uh, Katie and Blake. Uh, actually, both of them go to church with uh, Biggin and I, so we uh, we know them pretty well. But um, they're like I said, like uh, Jeremy said, they're actually going back and chasing their dream of uh, kind of just playing around and using their musical talents uh, outside of the uh, church. And they go from the church to the craft breweries, so <laughs> which <laughs> is perfect. awesome. So yeah, but I guess they I guess have beer will will play. So yeah. but uh, anyway, look, we're gonna get into some uh, a little bit of news here out of North Carolina. Um, actually, Jeremy brought it to my attention today. So, do you have that House Bill pulled up? Yeah, I do. Um, so, this is uh, House Bill 116. <coughs> it's uh, it was this is the first draft that got released, and people went through it. And most of the stuff's pretty good in it. Talking about you know sudden cardiac arrest education for um, athletes, and then a little bit for heat heat exhaustion, heat stroke, all stuff that we deal it's with basically here in just, North Carolina. Basically, just sports related for for youth. Yeah, middle school and high school um, athletes, and um, basically just making sure that you know we keep our kids alive long enough to uh, ruin our country. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, you do hear every time this year, you always hear one or two dropping of heat exhaustion or yeah, getting into two a days, right? Um, coming back for for uh, high school football. But it did have one little thing in it that caught a lot of people's attention. Um, it that, made had, the, that made the news nationally. So. <laughs> it did. It, it actually did. Um, it's finally their bathroom laws. Yeah. 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 yeah I, uh, when I heard about this on the radio, um, so they said, well, it's not the worst law in North Carolina. So I thought that was funny. <laughs> but so uh, basically, I won't read the whole thing because it's pretty long, but basically it's saying that if a student uh, participating in any activities exhibits signs or symptoms consistent with a con- concussion, the student shall be removed from the activity and shall not be returned to pl- um, allowed to return to play to, uh, or practice that day. The student can't p- 
do anything until they've uh, received written clearance for such participation from a physician licensed under, you know, other laws that are done. So that's fine. Uh, A neuropsychologist, fine. An athletic trainer, I'll take that. Physician's assistant, fine. Nurse practitioner, fine. Or a parent. (laughs) So so So, a parent who may not have a degree in anything anything anatomy wise yeah yeah gotcha. you know we got a big game up coming up against concord high yeah we need to get billy out there well, rub think, some dirt on it <laughs> that's right you know and uh being where we are um a, a lot of especially certain areas uh, of the city county um the, these kids can be a meal ticket out of a situation yeah so i, I could see where uh, that would draw some ire you know from the public because um, I just watched, man, you can listen back to how many, I can't even count how many episodes now where I meant, I referenced to my obsession with uh, Sports Center in the mornings. You know, yeah. I have to watch it and play replay a couple times. But I mean, how many 30 for 30s or special episodes you see about some kid who was in some type of sport, took a took a beaner to the head and, and uh, you know, broke his neck, concussion, yeah. ruined his life, and his parents or his parents or family or whatever just upset because he he was the ticket out of, right you know breaking the generational cycle and but, in this case you know if if that kid is that meal ticket out they could be making a a, a bad situation worse that's right uh, because then they're medical bills and they have to take care of this kid the rest of his life rather than mm. him you know going out because he played another game got another concussion is now you know has some serious brain injury i think uh i think this concussion protocol th- uh, stuff is you never heard a lot about it, you know, 30 years ago, 20 years ago. And I think, uh, a lot, especially in the last probably eight to 10 years has come, come to light, which yeah. is a good thing because I mean, obviously getting knocked in the noggin several times, I mean, bouncing your brain around, I mean, it affects you quite a bit. I mean, especially long-term, but especially in the long term, I mean, you know, I guess the studies have now shown that there is some some type of damage there. Yeah. Yes. I mean, look at boxers, you know, oh, look yeah. at, uh, fighters and, and the, they'll, they'll simply be in a punch trunk. Now you're seeing it in kids, you know, where there's scores of, they, they were a straight A student or, mm-hmm. a, you know, 3.0 GPA. And all of a sudden, um, after football season, they're having trouble. Yeah. For know, sure. learning, learning disorders automatically. So it's a scary thing. And, you know, back in the day, you know, NASCAR, we talked about NASCAR earlier, NASCAR drivers, um, used to get concussions and you wouldn't get out of the car like because if you got out of the car you lost your seat right so they used to tape their eye uh, um, eyelids open to keep driving mm. with a concussion wow. um, you know just stuff that w- people never thought of people you know just took a chance because you lost your seat so, so the 20 cars on the re- uh, on the track <laughs> actually like 40 cars i guess yeah so, exactly yeah. so um, but there is an update to this that um, after some you know public outcry um, that luckily they are going to take that provision out. So um, the other people we listed will be able to write in a note saying, yeah, they're fine, good to go, but the parent won't. That's so. good, yeah. Because, I mean, as a parent, um, sometimes you do know best for your kids versus the state or versus, you know, government entity, but this is actually not a bad thing because this does protect, you know, the, the kid and uh, protects them from, you know, further harm or further damage down the road because – Ultimately, I mean, the small, the percentage of people, percentage of these kids that actually take sports to the next level mm-hmm. is very minute. Yeah. You know, and then the kids that take it from the next level to pro is even smaller. So um, I know a lot of these kids are hoping big dreams, but th- this is actually just a, a really good, a really good thing I can see. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I actually have a, you know, a little bit of a concern with even the athletic trainer being able to, yeah. um, be- the athletic trainer for that school. Because, you know, that athletic trainer is around the coach all the time, and a coach could influence that athletic, tra- athletic trainer to be a little more lenient. So I'd like it to be, if it may be an athletic trainer, but a um, non-associated athletic trainer right. or something like that. Yeah, that uh, you know, I, actually, you know, I think the medical professional thing, because, you know, obviously the the, uh, the trainers are a voluntary position a lot of times, mm-hmm. you know, for these schools. A lot of these times, the medical these uh, athletic trainers really... I've seen 400 pound athletic trainers before, yeah. you know, so they don't, they really don't know anything about the anatomy and et cetera. They were just happened to be available and, uh, they were, you know, coach Tom's a uh, fantasy league guy. Yeah. So luckily he, I think at least around here, um, all the schools around here have like licensed, right. um, 
like actual athletic trainers who right. are teaching classes and like a part of the school. So right. at least that works out pretty yeah, well. I'm, th- I'm thinking of real small urban, uh, yeah, small yeah. Uh, rural areas, especially that, you know, don't have the budgets and absolutely. And the, and the client or the uh, people that live around them. But yeah, you know, so that's uh, score one from North Carolina. So hopefully uh, <laughs> that'll take us out of the news a little bit. So, but uh, anyway, I had a, uh, a listener um, email me the other day and we were kind of uh, going back and forth and, uh, she was like, uh, she's about the same age as I am, okay. Uh, which I'm just turned forty, and she was asking you what, uh, what are the five most most influential singers or artists, bands, you know, whatever mm-hmm. that um, kind of influenced my life. So I posed that question to you today, and I haven't heard your list yet. So I'm just kind of curious what you yeah. What so you, got. you threw that out to me, and I uh, did a little <coughs> searching. I'm not a big music person, so I'll put that out there first. Really? Yeah, not uh, not big into the music. You um, like listen to poem poems on Audible or something? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I mostly just talk radio, sports mm. stuff. Um, yeah, pretty lame. But um, you listen to music growing up? Not, I'm not too much, really? honestly. Yeah, I mean some, but never, never was really into it. Um, so you're a child of the '90s, right? Well, I looked up some a list to kind of refresh uh, my head, and I saw the '90s list and. I none of those bands were were something I listened <laughs> so to. So who were some of those bands? Just curious. So they had Nirvana, which is a, a big one, um, and probably one of the more influential. Um, well, they started they started a whole movement across the nation. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, but I was never a big Nirvana person. Um, they that, was, had, that was a little before your time. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, I, I I don't have the list up here now, but they had I think. Um, um, some Coolio maybe from, you know, back <laughs> yeah. then, um, uh, Pearl Jam, right. another one I wasn't really like, I think so it was you're, the early, you're the early 2000s then. Yeah. So like late nineties, early 2000s, uh, cause you know, I, I see the music, you know, how it influences you around end of middle school, high school. Right. And I was going into high school in 99. Right. So I, I'm more of the 2000s. Now this list has outcast as number one. Which I was very surprised about, and I couldn't even name a song by them. Hey, yeah, uh, no. I, I, uh, I mean, I know it, but you know, you had to tell me. So yeah, I would, yeah. Th- I would thought that would have been CeeLo Green or something. Yeah, so I, I, I would disagree with that one. That one definitely didn't in, um, influence me. But Eminem was number two. I could see that. Yeah, I definitely listened to. He, he a was decent everywhere. Amount of Eminem. He was yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um, they have Coldplay number three. I wasn't a big Coldplay person, but I know a lot of my friends were. Um, I don't think Gwyneth Paltrow is a big fan of Coldplay anymore. <laughs> That's true. Uh, Coldplay, the, Coldplay is just like the generic coffee shop band, you know. Yeah, I think. Yeah. So I mean, I think if uh, Nickelback didn't have as bad of a reputation, <laughs> they'd be Nickelback. How, how did Nickelback get a bad reputation? I, I don't know. To speak to that? I don't know honestly. They, they are the they are the constant meme uh-huh. that, that everyone trolls everyone with. And they're, I mean, they're not that bad. They got they got a couple songs. They're all right. I, I'll admit they got a couple songs. Like, now, some of them are just acts, just you know, uber uh, d- disastrous. But but they're not couple. like I should make fun of you for liking them. Back. Right. Yeah. Right. It's kind of like uh, what's it's kind of like Creed. The yeah, band Creed. Yeah. You know, their first album it was all right. And yeah. Then the second album kind of sucked. And then the uh, lead singer Scott Stipe kind of went went nuts. a little crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um. So they've got Radiohead fourth. Um. I didn't have much Radiohead. Uh, everyone knows their their one song. Yeah, or they have two songs that everyone knows. Couple, yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, as one of my friends calls them, Kane West or Kanye West. <laughs> so I can see that for the later two thousands, maybe. I could name I, I could name a song of his either. I don't know that I could. Right now, I I know him very well, but I don't know that I could name one of his songs. You know, and I think the funny thing about uh, some of the uh, uh, black rappers. Uh, you have like Puff Daddy, mm-hmm. and then they change their names yeah. thirteen times. <laughs> Same thing with Kanye West; he goes by Yeezy. Yeah, and, I mean, could you imagine like Leonard Skinner <laughs> doing that? I can't. I can't imagine them changing their name thirteen times. Yeah. So, so. Um, so they have Alicia Keys again. Not me. You two though would be on my list. I think they're man. They're eighties, nineties, in two everything. Yeah. But they were big in two thousands with yeah. uh, was that Joshua Tree end of nineties something like that. I think Joshua Tree was Joshua Tree was earlier. Was it earlier than that? That's when I was listening to it. So. But everyone's but like I said though, it's one of those timeless genres mm-hmm. of music, you know, that crosses kind of barriers. Yeah, so. absolutely. 
um, System of a Down. They had a couple good songs. They have one CD and yeah. they just went away. So I don't see them as a top 10, mm. 9, 2000 song. Who made but, this list? Uh, I don't know. Some <laughs> some site. I, yeah. Probably BuzzFeed. <laughs> and then the White Stripes. White Stripes are good. Yeah, White Stripes is still I like around. the White Stripes. Yeah. And then here's another one that would be in my top five, Green Day. Okay. Green Day is that. another one that goes for a while. Yeah. Um, And then they've got another one who would definitely be in my top five. I think this is my fourth one. Not in that order because these, these are much higher. Uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. I can't stand the Red Hot Chili Peppers, oh, really? but I can see that. Yeah, because every one of their songs is about California and probably some bridge. Yeah, that's so, I mean. But no, but uh, you know, as far as influencing a generation, probably so. I think uh, Green Day probably uh, out of that list is probably one of the bigger ones, I would say. Yeah. Just because um, they took a genre of punk, which they're not really punk, but mm-hmm. they took a genre of punk and took it kind of more mainstream. Yeah. And, uh, but also not only that, they, they influenced politics too, mm-hmm. because, uh, when George W. Bush was in office and they came out with several CDs that were anti that. Yeah. But, um, they, they influenced the political movement. I think, I think they probably influenced the generation. I, I would say green day is another one too, that went across generations. Cause I know my brother was, a, my brother's nine years older than me and was a big green day fan. Okay. So, um, and then, uh, just a couple more on here. Jay-Z definitely was my era. I wasn't a big Jay-Z person, but I know a lot of my friends were. I did like the Jay-Z Lincoln Park collaboration CD. That's where I was I, going next. Yeah, I did like Lincoln that. Park is my all-time favorite band. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, they're from, they're from Illinois. Illinois. Are they? I think so. Yeah. I've, uh, constantly said that Lincoln Park's first CD is the best CD, top to bottom. There's not a bad song on that CD. I still listen to it to this day. It is, I think, but like I said, I think the Jay-Z collaboration. The reanimation. Yeah. I think that so was, good. I think that was actually a good CD. So, and, uh, I think, I think I still have that on my, uh, on my iTunes or something like that. Yeah. I, I get made fun of when people come over and listen to my playlist. Cause it's literally just every Lincoln Park song. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever happened to those guys? I, I don't know. It's been uh, it's been a little bit since I've heard from him. Um, I know the lead singer all of a sudden like went anorexic and bald. That's all I remember. Yeah, I know they they split up to do their own projects for a little bit, um, but I don't know that it was a full time you know breaking up. Um, but like I said, I'm not big into music. But so what would dude uh, my dude my list is like totally off the wall. Yeah, there, let, let's hear your list. So uh, for for listeners out there that have never seen me, I'm actually a. Uh, <laughs> Uh, formerly bearded guy, heavily tattooed, um, spent some time in the uh, motorcycle world, currently still live in that era. So uh, uh, I, I'm probably not your average Joe that you know goes to work a banking job and wears a suit and tie. But uh, actually, I would have to say uh, a lot of my father's music influenced me because okay. um, my dad listened to a lot of soul R&B growing up. So um, we had the LPs of uh, Marvin Gaye and, and Sam Cooke. Good so, ones. Uh, yes, and both timeless. I mean, both uh, both uh, both music that you would make babies to. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> and yeah, so Sam Cooke is a huge influence on uh, things. Actually, uh, kind of sound cheesy, but me and my uh, me and my daughter took so- uh, singing lessons together. Oh yeah. And uh, for my my wife's. Uh, uh, for our 15th anniversary, actually, uh, I threw her, a, a, uh, we renewed our vows and I threw a, a big party at my restaurant. Oh, that's awesome. And uh, actually sang her uh, uh, Bring It On Home to Me by Sam Cooke. So <laughs> Perfect. I don't know how, how it sounded with a sinus infection at the time, but uh, I tried my best. So I guess I have I'm to sure count. the little one helping count. you out was good. <laughs> well, she was, I think she was running around at the time. But, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, she did a good version of Rocking Around the Christmas Tree at the, Perfect. the local recital. But, um, so Sam Cook uh, and Marvin Gaye, I, I, I can't choose one because both of them kind of sound the same. Um, a lot of them, both of them wrote their uh, music. Uh, both of them had just impacts on generations forward, you know, right. especially R and B. Um, but like I said, they, I mean, I listen to Sam Cook when I'm when I'm stressed. Mm-hmm. I'll sit out in a hammock, you know, listen to Sam Cook. Let the uh, sultry velvet voice just <laughs> melt those worries away. Um, I, I think also uh, my grandfather was a truck driver. Okay. Just a uh, chain-smoking truck driver, just a rough guy. Yeah. Just you know, somebody that you would imagine 
uh, wearing a Mac built uh, Mac <laughs> Peterbilt uh, hat. Uh, always has a cigarette in his mouth, a Marlboro Red. But um, when he was home, um, Merle Haggard and Waylon Jennings. So I got to kind of loop those two guys together. And, and also, the classics. I, yeah, actually, uh, uh, probably Willie Nelson in there too. So, um, so if any time I get a little hankering for a, a little bit of country, I listen to the old uh, honky tonk stuff. I'm not <laughs> I'm not into too much in the pop stuff. Um, Nirvana was a very big influence. Yeah on uh, me because i i'm about 10 years younger than you so uh their first cd came out and r- literally blew nations away I yeah mean, the nation away and blew cultures away it was a big one and i mean kids went where kids went from wearing tie-dye t-shirts to wearing flannels yeah i mean overnight just because the whole grunge movement was was huge so or as uh donald trump says huge <laughs> but um th- that was very big and then you know doo-wop music okay kind of crazy okay but um my dad also was a big fan of doo-wop music so and i tried to pay tribute to that when in in a couple of my restaurants i had uh were themed kind of more rockabilly so we played a lot of rockabilly doo-wop okay. music so I, I still enjoy that genre yeah but um i'm a big fan of music um i I, li- I like you i listen to a lot of talk radio or a lot of podcasts now yeah i guess that's what you do when you get older <laughs> and uh I do when I do enjoy the music. I kind of do enjoy the classics. I couldn't name anything that's probably happened since two thousand five. Oh wow, yeah. So I, you know, I have like I said, I have my my list of favorite singers and uh, people I really enjoy in genres I enjoy. Right. But um, I couldn't name anything from two thousand five. My my daughter, like she's thirteen, will put some of this crap on now. And I'm like, <laughs> this is she's this, right into it. Yeah, they, they they repeat the same lyric thirteen times yep. and. Uh, drop it some beat to it and that's it so and i i find it funny when you go to the on youtube and um i'm not i'm not i've never been a big fan of rap it's right. not me i mean if anyone i like biggie or tupac if i had to listen to somebody i find it funny now the, these uh a lot of these uh, rap radio stations calling out some of these younger rappers and they're like all right let's we're gonna throw a beat on you see if you can freestyle and they can't even do that yeah so i don't know if you've seen those videos on youtube i've or seen not. a couple yeah so they make they make you laugh yeah so so we both uh brought up nirvana <coughs> right. in our you know uh music choices got an interesting little factoid i heard about nirvana the other day all right so dave Grohl was in nirvana right and then he was in foo fighters right so um dave Grohl has never touched any of the money he's made from foo fighters holy crap he completely lives off his nirvana money wow isn't that insane and he's got a he's got a massive compound out in la rides bikes all over like you know spends a ton of money ride bikes like motorcycles yeah oh he's a big motorcycle guy he did uh he does motorcycle stuff up in uh like dc all the time for um like rolling thunder stuff like that really um but has never touched any Foo Fighters money, you know. Foo Fighters is a band that you know. It's one of those certain certain CDs and songs are great. Yeah, you know, you just you you really kind of get into. But um, I, I'll have to check some out. Check some of that out because that's kind of big yeah. Foo Fighters guy. I yeah. like Foo Fighters. A the couple of their CDs, like you said, it's like Lincoln Park man. There's not a bad song on it. Yeah, you just put it, press play and go with it. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. All right, guys, um, we're gonna take a small break and then we'll be right back. If you know me, Biggin you'll know I'm crazy about Kentucky and bourbon. So what happens when you throw coffee beans in a bourbon barrel? It's pure magic. I stumbled upon Kentucky Nose Bourbon Barrel Coffee a few years ago during a trip to Lexington, and it was love at first sip. From the heart of a true craftsman comes the unique combination of coffee and bourbon. Do yourself a favor and check out KentuckyNose.com to get the finest bourbon barrel coffee the bluegrass has to offer. Check out KentuckyNose.com. You can also check out his new store at 337 West Broadway Street if you're just hanging around Frankfort, Kentucky. It's a new store. It's supposed to be really awesome. So go check it out, KentuckyNose.com. All right, guys. We're back to the Southern Fry Philosophy Podcast. Uh, we got one little last segment we're going to do, and then we're going to go to our pre-recorded um, interview with Lindy the Band. Uh, this is an interview with uh, myself, Mojo, and Biggin. Uh, with Lenny in the band uh, before he has jumped on an airplane and headed to India. So uh, last night was the first speech by Trump in front of Congress. Um, we're not going to really focus on the political side of it. We may dive into it a little bit, but we're not really going to focus on the points because 
if you want that, you can turn to Fox News, get that side. You can turn to CNN. You can turn to that, you know, find that side. Uh, I'm sure you can find Al Sharpton's uh, podcast if it's still going on. <laughs> um, that or you can listen to Rush Limbaugh. I mean, those guys probably have a little more insight to uh, that. But uh, what we really want to kind of talk about from our, our perspective, and I think it was for as a libertarian, it was really kind of in full display last night uh, with – the theatrics, the drama yeah. of it, uh, the the partisanship. I, I think those are the things that kind of really took me was um, the the Democrats, the the women Democrats uh, dressed dressed in white. Did yeah. You, did you see that? I, I didn't notice it. Um, I didn't uh, really think too much of it except for that it was a weird you know decision. I don't know if they do you know if they were making some sort of stand or yeah actually they they were okay. um, they were what they did they dressed in white to. Um, to protest uh, Trump's uh, alleged rollbacks for women's rights. Okay. Which um, I can't remember which host on what show now or what channel, but uh, uh, when he pressed um, Pelosi on what rollbacks Donald Trump has proposed or uh, what he's done, she couldn't name one. Yeah. She just said women's rights. Yeah, the whole whole dressed in white thing kind of remind me like like the, uh, the... the uh, suicide death clan. <laughs> yeah, where they they drink the Kool Aid and you know, cover their heads in sheets or something. So I, I don't know. It was it was really weird. Um, but you know the when, when Trump would make a good couple good points, you know, in seeing that the Democrats they, they would kind of look around to making sure that were they supposed to clap or are they not supposed right. to clap, you know, and then um, uh, the, also the politics of you know Donald Trump would be like you know. Uh, I ate a Whopper today and then you know, like standing ovation. Right. It just out of nowhere. Yeah. It was, it was definitely interesting and it was interesting, um, to see, um, like every once in a while the Republicans would all stand and then like one Democrat would stand and like right. two would clap. And so I don't know. It's just an interesting. And the ones really entrenched in their beliefs, like, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not sure if Maxine Waters was there cause she was, uh, She's already trying to to file for impeachment proceedings <laughs> of forty days in or whatever. Yeah, but um, yeah, just the bitterness. Yeah, um, it just shows how like divided we are, um, and how like you know we can't come together over anything. Um, even some of the simple stuff that he said that wasn't, you know, controversial either way. Right. Um, you know, no one would stand for, and you know, it was kind of interesting seeing. Um, I forget which two ladies it was. I, I looked them up when I saw it, but um, they were like talking, you know, chatting back and forth. And he said something, and one of them started clapping, and the other one, I don't even think she heard him, just like, oh, yeah, start, yeah. start clapping. Yeah, like, I think it was Elizabeth Warren, was, was one of them, yeah. Um, uh, AKA what they call her, Pocahontas. Because <laughs> she claimed to be Native American to, to be a professor at Harvard. Yeah. But, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just, it was all, it all felt like a show to me. Like, yeah, absolutely. I think so too. There was a script and, you know, people stood when they were supposed to and sat when they were supposed to. Well, and off the air, you kind of brought up um, the world wrestling entertainment, <laughs> the WWE. Yeah, I mean, looking, looking at the beginning of it, um, as soon as it came on. So I, um, I didn't tell you this, but I watched uh, maybe 30 minutes of it while I was at work today. And then um, I continued listening to the rest of it while I was at the gym, which was great workout uh, <laughs> stuff to listen to. Um, but, you know, the 30 minutes that I did watch, um, as soon as he started speaking, I I couldn't think or stop help but think. I was like, this feels like a Saturday Night Live sketch that I can't believe that the guy who um, was the apprentice and, you know, told, um, you know, all those celebrities, Pendula, you fired. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the guy who shaved Vince McMahon's head after he beat him at WrestleMania 33. For charity. You know, yeah. yeah. That, that's our president. Like, you know. Well, I guess on the flip side, though, I guess you can tell, I, I could tell my children that anyone can <laughs> be president. That's so, true. I mean, because yeah, that's, the, that's the one thing that we're always told, remember, in, yeah. in, in the indoctrination centers, a.k.a. the schools, that um, anyone doesn't that's the great thing about America. Anyone can be president. So, yeah. I mean, you must have seven billion in the bank, but <laughs> you can be president. So, so I guess you know. I, I know. I trust me. I, I get that. Yeah. Uh, you, you sometimes it's still, um, still that. And, and what I find funny also is that, you know, he he. I think for forty days he's been he's kind of been on a tear. You know, yeah. he's making some executive orders. He he hasn't brought anything to Congress yet, um, but he has been on an executive order tear, um, which. Last year, when Obama was in, 
the Republicans were upset with executive orders. Yeah. But now executive orders are. I mean, they are, both are hate awesome. it when you know the other one's yeah. doing it. It's all terrible. Exactly. But um, you know, um, he he's. I mean, some of the things he's proposed are kind of far fetched. I, I don't know how. I don't know how it's going to happen. I, I mean, in, in, in principle, they sound kind of awesome. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. But um, it should be interesting. I mean, the next four years. I mean, like like I've said before, America is too big. Um, we're not going to go downhill. No, we've endured a lot worse. So um, I don't. I don't think that uh, whatever happens is going to affect us for the next ten years. Yeah, I mean, I'm. I mean, my uh, biggest hope for this this whole thing and having um, a celebrity as our president people will realize that no one person should have that much power yeah I agree and, with you. you know we'll start to scale back the the power that the the president has because uh, he wasn't supposed to ever have that much power well that's that's the that's the thing the last six months of of obama's presidency is when they started issuing more mm-hmm. edicts basically to give more power and yeah uh, it's a scary thing you know we're, we're definitely you know inching towards an authoritarian type you know leadership and uh that's why we we ask for common sense. Yeah, you know, and that's why we try to preach ourselves as a common sense show because we we can't look at things on both sides and also the middle. And we don't want to go down that path of fascism, racism, yeah, Nazism or whatever. But um, we do have to have a little bit of common sense and in, in order as far as a government. Yeah, the way I like to think about it is if I can't find something to agree with with somebody, then that's on me. Like you know yeah. that I'm looking at it wrong. Like, because we, you know, we're all people, we can right. all find something to agree on. We can all find something to dis, you know, right. disagree on. So that's on the other side of that coin. If you find someone that you agree with every single thing on, that's on you as well. Yeah. So, you know, I, um, I think that people need to start realizing that and come together and yeah, hopefully, you know. hopefully, you know, and actually I was kind of encouraged, you know, from an, from an outsider point, uh, watching uh, some of the clips on CNN mm-hmm. afterwards. And, uh, you know, like Van Jones. Van Jones is a personal friend of Obama and actually made statements like this was the first day that Donald Trump's, uh, of, of Trump's presidency. Yeah. It basically gave him some, you know, kudos. So that's kind of nice to see. Maybe there will be some healing in the divide. Yeah. So I saw a poll uh, right before coming in here that um, that for the first time people aren't, as pessimistic or aren't right. you know at their lowest of pessimism or for where the country's going so you know we'll see we'll see how it goes i don't know it's hey, gonna be interesting still think we need a libertarian guy in there and just yeah. to cut cost and- he hasn't done anything as crazy as i thought he would have right. done by now i right. thought he would have done something i mean legitimately impeachable um <laughs> you know whether people think he's done i don't think he's done anything close to impeachable no, yet no um, we, we've had like i said we've had worse I mean, yeah so far, he's he hasn't been in there long enough, but <laughs> right. You know what? I think I think we have the Clinton standard. You know, as long as you have the slick Willie standard, I think you. Uh, <laughs> every, if every president lives below that benchmark, I think we're all right. <laughs> so, anyway, that's our two guys' take on uh, the speech last night. Here is our episode, or here is our interview with Lenny the Band. So stay tuned for that next. back this is southern fried philosophy podcast and uh that is our special guest for the show lenny in parentheses the band thanks guys for coming on the show appreciate L- it lenny couldn't be here though today lenny the dog yeah the dog yeah no he yeah couldn't. thanks yeah. for having us thanks Let, for having let's us. introduce the, uh, the the actually the two members of the band right uh we have katie who is the i guess the lead singer vocal uh, vocalist we'll, we'll a, say vocalist. A vocalist. 
Oh no, his, Blake's face is just going nuts well, right now. He, he plays the guitar. I'm gonna so leave. Do we have? Do we? <laughs> I'm gonna leave. I, I here's the thing. I have to sing because Blake does everything else. In fact, we were talking earlier about how now he wants to bring a keyboard or a piano. I was like, you're gonna make me look terrible because you, you need the symbols between the thighs. I think he's a one man band, and I just stand over next there year. And, we'll like, just phase you stuff. phase you out singing totally. <laughs> you just completely. you'll just stand there. I want a shaker egg. Yeah, so we have, we have like so we have something. Katie and we also have Blake. That's the two uh, members of Lenny the band. So how did you come up with the name? Because obviously neither one of you guys are named Lenny. That so. is true. Um, well, we were sitting around my old townhome and, you know, we were, you know, coming up with different names and, you know, I was like, well, we'll just name it after my dog. So that <laughs> we, that's pretty looked, much it. Yeah, we it? looked over and, and Lenny the dog was sitting well, on the couch I, like a human. He was like leaning back, like the right. biggest, goofiest looking dog. We're like, you know, Lenny makes us happy. Like, yeah. and we want to make people happy. We wanted to kind of go money. for more of like a mascot because we started bringing him to like the gigs and things like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yes. But then it, he became out of control. So that, <laughs> Well, that, and we also started ended. playing at places where we couldn't have him. Yeah. And also we should say that when we started Lenny, we did not think that this was going to go very far. <laughs> no, we didn't. No. <laughs> so we were like, whatever, just let's call ourselves after a dog. We you got, you got start, I knew you guys started at a bunch of uh, craft breweries, though. So we did, did. did Lenny develop a drinking problem? or <laughs> Well, <Blake? laughs> H2O. Yeah, he drinks just... a lot of water and he pees a lot, so that's a drinking yeah, problem. Can we so. just be honest? I think his rider just got a little bit out of hand. Like It was just kibbles and bits only, and yeah. only like the brown ones. <laughs> was that was that the case? Yeah, needed, it's like we're done. needed a masseuse yes. beforehand. Uh, yeah. 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 His yeah. rider was intense. <laughs> I, the, actually, uh, I actually got to do Willie Nelson's rider once. So Wait, what does that even mean? Well, Willie Nelson, his <laughs> his, uh, his um, oh, yeah. one of his agents came in. Uh, I, we used to have a health food store. Oh, okay. In Clemson, South Carolina, and he came in looking for like aloe vera juice, yeah, um, spirulina, all kinds of stuff. And, and then one and of the marijuana. and then they asked us, "Do you know where you can, we can find a brand? A brand? Yeah, I think he carries it with him. Yeah. Do you know where we can find just a recently hatched uh, chicken? Wait, what? <laughs> what? Yes, he has chicks, like like literally chicken, chicken, okay. you know, the chicks on on this bus. <laughs> For some reason, it's like a superstition. They're calming or no? I have you know. been around? Fresh here? eggs are great. Well, yeah, but, yeah but they're too small. Yeah, they were are, just an egg. Them. Yeah, so I don't know what the deal was that, but mm. old the old redheaded stranger. Anyway. <laughs> well, <laughs> we digress. Don't, we don't demand a whole lot when we go out. What's your rider beer? consist of? Beer. We would uh, like beer. Yeah, yeah. Adult beverages, pretzels, um, cold <laughs> yeah. sandwiches. Mm. Nice. Why not? Why not hot sandwiches? You, because uh, they use a cold. There, <laughs> because they're usually cold. Yeah. Got it. That's genius. When I think of a sandwich, it's cold. Okay. Cold right. cuts, jeez, whatnot. <laughs> You've got the like the the easiest rider I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah, it's, it's even easier nice. than that. <laughs> normally, we just show up, um, get a power outlets beer. and things like that. Yes, oh, we do yeah. need a lot of power outlets. Yeah. yeah. Well, cool. uh, I guess let's uh, let's back up a little bit here. So we we got obviously two individual people here who came together to form this band. So it's like Voltron. Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely. Yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. Like um, Captain Planet. So let's, 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 <laughs> we just only have two arms or two legs. <laughs> don't, please don't say Captain Planet. I, I had nightmares about that, that, that superhero. <laughs> Captain so. Planet. He's a hero. Yeah, the green mullet. Take oh. yeah. We should do that. No. I, that's a good idea. We should not. <laughs> we should start doing TV oh theme songs. Guys, I'll give you TV theme songs, yes, but not yeah. Captain Planet. So let's, let's, okay. I guess let's Sorry. hear a little bit about your stories, because obviously um, bo- we know both of you guys from our church. And, uh, both, Imagine that. Both of you guys. <laughs> we, we have a great pool of people from our church. So, <laughs> we do. Um, but obviously you guys are work, help, help with the worship team and stuff like that. So we want to hear a little bit about your stories. I know that you guys are just... Unique and unique in each and every way. So I want to hear a little bit about your individual stories. Katie, you're looking at me, so I guess I'll go. <laughs> um, what about my story? Do you want to just the whole? How do you how do you get started with music? Thanks for doing the interview. Yeah, Thanks. <laughs> this, no, this is this is this usually happens. This is how this happens. Yeah. this is our conversations during our gigs. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. just we just talk. Um, so I started doing. Doing the mu- doing the music. We you been doing that music, boy. I was doing the music. So I, I, you know, I, I guess it started in the bedroom. Whoa. With whoa now. Okay, okay. Back up. This is a family show. Uh, with 
you know, the whole tennis show. racket guitar. Like Remember the tennis oh, the yeah. air, air guitar? Yeah. 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 No, no, no. I always had a dream of playing <laughs> guitar and, you know, I always loved singing. And I asked, you know, I had the cassette tapes and, mm-hmm. and I used to make, you know, uh, I used to want to be a DJ or yes. a rapper. I don't okay. think, any, I, don't, I think everybody goes through that phase. Oh so I used to make the mixtapes uh-huh. and like, you know, record the radio. Mm-hmm. You know, that's real legal and everything. This one's going out to yeah. Casey and her love. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got Fifth you. grade dance. So um, I was involved in church at a young age. And one of my good friends who was uh, like a youth sponsor or whatever, I was singing on the bus. And he was like, hey, man, you should start singing in the youth group at church. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, dude. So I started doing it, and I, you know, I helped lead the music for the youth. But I didn't play guitar at the time, so I was just like skinny dude jumping around stage, just singing, you know, mm-hmm. just Christian worship stuff. So some of the good stuff, eh? Yeah. Then I then I got tired of that, and I'm like, I need a guitar. So I was <laughs> I was like, all I want to do is play chords and just play acoustic. And so I, he showed me how to play guitar, and pretty much the rest is history. And you know, I and and I developed a love for music, so I ended up uh, going to school for uh, music, uh, Johnson University. Ooh. Not in Johnson, Tennessee, but Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So I had uh, kind of going backwards. I I, I was at a, a crossroads when my, during my twenties, and uh, it was either to be a record, do recording, and or pursue music. So I I went the pursue uh actual music degree so and i went to a school to study specifically church music so i ended up working for a church in fort mill south carolina mm. for about five years and then i traveled um after working there for five years i ended up transitioning and started working with mr robin thick and you know maroon five if you heard of them never heard There's of them. as a technician kind of- is that blurring the lines a little bit? I'm kind of, I'm kind of confused. Yeah. <laughs> so I kind of got a taste of the the Hollywood um, atmosphere, which wow. it was it was fun. It's just a lot of traveling, and I'm just kind of an old soul and wanted to stay home and move back. And you know, got to I got to know Katie and, and Zach, her Katie's husband. Now he was my roommate, and that's kind of how oh, wow. we, I had no idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. huh. Zachary was my roommate. So, Aww. and now he's mine. Oh, mm. you can have him back if you. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, sorry. I'm for good. Listening to this. So Zach has cuddled with both of you. Got it. So you transitioned from school to um, private sector, I guess, music. Yep. And then back to steady at home because you're an old soul, I and am. now you you do some worship, uh, like I said, at church, and then yep. to kind of wet the whistle, you do also do private gigs now. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Katie and I, I don't even, I can't even remember how, how it came about, the whole Lenny thing. Okay, you go. Yeah. Ahead. I can. Right. I can tell. I know we were She's sitting in my living room and, yeah. It was actually before that. <laughs> so, uh, I just, so we had been um, involved, uh, I think probably for about two years um, doing worship at church together. And, um, I think maybe Dave Milam said something oh. to one of us about how like, Oh yeah, we did. should do this. Like we, we right. banter off of each other really well. We have a lot of fun playing music together. Now. We should do mm-hmm. this outside of the church. And, um, we both had experience playing music outside of the church. So we're like, yeah, I mean, that's fine. We could do that. So, um, then it became this, well, what do we play? What do we want to play? What are we mm. going to call ourselves? Yeah. What are we actually going to do? What, you know, what mm-hmm. do we, and we really don't have time to write music. And a lot of people ask us, go do me original stuff. I'm like, mm, yeah, I do, it's, but it's so hit and miss. No one wants we, to hear my when stuff. We go out and play. I mean, like there are places that don't really want us to play original right. music. And there are other places that we have inquired to go at, and they want us to play three hours of yeah. original music. It's, it's either <laughs> like, all we or nothing. We are not old mm. enough. Like we don't have that much music of our own. <laughs> Can you play nine hours of original music? No. Can you play your whole, you know, just greatest hits? Start playing and never stop playing. Were we the so Eagles? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I remember. It would uh, take nine minutes. At my bar, yeah. at my bar, I used to own it. It was, it was mainly everyone per they really wanted cover music. So, um, and there, but everyone has their own unique twist of it. I mean, so, yeah. so yeah. um, 
But yeah, no, the original is very few wanted. I, I never understood that, but yeah. Here, here's a question. If they you, can't sing along to originals. Yeah, I'm sorry. That's true. If if you do play covers, do you have to like do any like copyright material or like how does that work? You no, because we're it? not really we're not really you know doing it know. for. We're not really, I guess, pushing it. I guess you. I guess you can give them ten percent of your beer. Yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, I mean, Pour one we, out for the homie. we go out and play, and and the generally the places where um, we go to play already have some sort of license Ask because yeah. they well they have uh, to yeah. yeah they have to play music when we're not there, and none of that's you know that's all copyrighted music. So, right. um, so generally we fall under we'll fall under that cap, but we have gone to a couple places. Um, there's one specifically that I won't I won't say their name, but there is one specifically that we really wanted to play at, and they're like, sorry, like we can't. We ha- they have a list of songs, um, like forty five minute list of songs that, and those they just play those over and over again because it's the who, only who ones they. Now? I can't. I'm not gonna <laughs> say. But the, the, you know, like they're like we can't have you come in and cover all this music. Like we mm. we aren't we don't have a license for that. Wow. Cover I say it's your so, loss. So <laughs> it's your loss. However, your loss. I can say that we have not really had a lack of places to play. We started playing at a bunch of um, breweries. That was sort of our first. Um, and then we have gotten into, there's one hotel that we play at, um, semi-regularly and we've, um, played at other kinds of public events and festivals um, and things like that yeah, and so, private events and, you know, we'll play pretty much play music, anywhere. So, which is and we've played a couple of like grand openings of breweries, which have been really fun to be a part no, of. No like, shortage of those here. Yeah. yeah no. Thanks Charlotte. You're really funding. So when we started, <laughs> when we started last year, I, I told Blake, I said, my, my like goal for this is to do five, mm-hmm. five gigs is what I wanted. And total you wanted for the eight. Year? Blake want yeah, total okay. for the year. Blake wanted eight. And we ended up playing like 40. It's not oh, wow. crazy. Something yeah. that we did not expect. It kind of got out of hand. It's <laughs> and like, we, played, we played like seven or eight gigs in yeah, one month. Lindsay, my I mean, fiance, like, was like, uh, <clears throat> so are we going to have a weekend where we're we we going to see do each other? <laughs> nope. As long as you come to the brewery. And yeah. We're going to be seen. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we got three hours of this. And we've played in hurricanes and we've played yeah. in wow. really bad electricity storms and we've played. But we're not desperate. <laughs> we played in 35 degree weather. We played in 105 degree weather mm-hmm. at the same place. We learned. <laughs> place. We learned that will not happen again this summer. You wear shorts. Yes, we have learned. We have learned a lot of lessons in our first year. I don't yeah. blame you. What's been sure. the biggest lesson you've learned so far? You think? What's uh, yours? Well, the 105 degree one. We're, yeah. I'm not playing outside I anymore. I think. I think mainly weather <laughs> contingencies. So we've mm. we've had multiple gigs canceled like an hour maybe ahead of time. Like when Blake had already packed up his car for sudden rainstorm, where they had not. They did not have a rain plan mm. to move us into a covered area, or you know, we can't. We obviously can't have our gear hanging out in the rain. <laughs> yeah. So. So, Under an umbrella. so we've had some some rain that canceled and playing in really really hot weather ended mm. up. I mean that was just the worst. So, that day was so terrible. So Katie, tell us a little bit about your your backstory because uh, yeah. yeah we heard we heard about Blake's mm. boring story. Yeah. So. so Blake and I have had some really interesting intersections. We we were both born in Little Rock. Really, Arkansas, wow. Arkansas, wow. Arkansas. No, no clue. Go um, we were both born there. Yep, and. Mm. Um, it was probably about three and a half years ago that we met, but I had kind of like I had known Blake sort of on a peripheral group of friends. And um, so I, I grew up um, involved in music in, this, in a similar way that Blake had. I was singing in church and I did some off Broadway stuff when I was a little kid and I did music lessons. I, I, um, I um, was trained by a, a really popular um um, vocal coach. Um, and she is amazing and I love her. Um, but she, she taught me a lot and got me involved in some of those productions early on. So, um, I did some of that and then, um, actually did another little acoustic duo I played with in high school and we actually played down in Charlotte a couple of times. I wish I could remember where, where we had been, but, um, and my, my mom wanted me to go to um, KCU, Kentucky Christian University, there you go. um, wanted me to co- go to KCU to study music. They had a great music program at that time. And, um, I just really, I wasn't, I wasn't interested. I had had an opportunity when I was in high school to, to maybe pursue some professional stuff. And, um, I just, I don't know. I just didn't, it, it didn't feel like the right time and it didn't feel like something I wanted to do. Um, uh, I wanted to finish high school, you know? Yeah. 
I wasn't going to be like Britney Spears or anything. <laughs> Thank um, you. Thank you for doing that. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome. So, um, so then I ended up going to school for nothing related to music. I mean, I, I was involved in, in a touring choir and some other things when I was in school, but um, never really did that. I led worship at my church. Um, I was working at a church as a youth minister after college and I led worship there for a few years and then came, um, to the church where we're at now. At that point it was kinetic and I was working there at kinetic and, um, did not do any music, um, for a number of years. And then, um, when I came off staff at kinetic, um, then I started getting back into the, the worship scene and, um, Blake and I were put on the same, um, team. And that's when we started seeing you. Drew names so. out of a hat. Like, oh, Katie. <laughs> oh, that girl. <laughs> She's so loud. <laughs> so yeah, so we, we sang together for about two years and then and then back to the end of Blake's story. We crossed paths and um just decided to pursue it. And it's been really fun. Yeah, it's I mean, I, I think our goal was just to have fun. Just to have fun. And just mm-hmm. I think selfishly too, because you know, we have a bunch of friends and everybody always asks you out and hey we should do this yeah well which we, we should just play at these breweries and other yeah. places and we can just invite them yeah and we can hang out yes and make With a little bit of, of money friends. yeah it was nice all the same i mean all the same time. when we were doing this i was in when we started i was engaged so all the money that um we were making i just put towards my honeymoon mm-hmm. you know and and that was was really great but it um, i think at one point Maybe once or twice, Blake, I said, let's just quit our jobs and do this full time. And I'm like, no, I was <laughs> we can't. Maybe under the influence. Yeah. I mean, like, I know that you're not, I know you're not serious, but every once in a while, Blake will call me with some harebrained, like something. And most of the time I have to talk him down. Sometimes it's really good. And this Lenny thing was, it was a really, really good one of his, but. What's one of the, the things that you had to talk him down? That you're just like that's absolutely not well, gonna happen. Fre- I don't remember any of frequently. these. <laughs> well, he's tried to start multiple companies with me. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but kind of under the umbrella of Lenny. Yeah, we're gonna yeah, branch yeah. up Lenny. Yeah, D. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Lenny Marketing. Lenny Marketing. Lenny <laughs> SEO. Prestige, yeah. Prestige Worldwide. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Would, would you guys like to sponsor a podcast? <laughs> the podcast world. Sponsored by Lenny the Band. <laughs> so we could buy a bunch of those uh, red boxes, you know? Those, have you heard of red box? Mm-hmm. What's the thing now? Is like, of, yeah. Everybody's trying to do the frozen yogurt ones. I heard about that. Like what? They're like the red box, but they're the red box of frozen yogurts. Hmm. Like, I've not heard that one. Yeah, you just push a button and it's automatic. Oh, you, do you oh. get to keep your cup and you you can oh, get yeah. a refill well, I don't for think like I'm seventy five cents? I are there? Do those exist in Charlotte? Uh, I don't know. I haven't even looked it up. I feel like I need to know that. Okay, we'll look it up after. The I'm show, sure it's promise. really good. I mean, <laughs> I'm sure it's probably not very good, but I feel like I need that. <laughs> I need to at least try it. You guys talked about uh, you know the professional the professional side. Have has any has the thought of like going to like America's Got Talent or like any of those shows ever crossed your mind? Because you both have amazing voices, by the way. Uh, earlier on, now I'm just like, I'd <laughs> rather just stay at home and be with my family. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I've seen, like I said, I've seen that side where it's not necessarily bad. It's just, you know, when you see, um, you know, real touring artists, mm-hmm. you know, people always think, oh, you know, their jobs are easy. All they got to do is sing songs and, then they work like dogs. I mean, yeah. they're always on demand doing interviews, clubs, and yeah. all, you know. They're always involved. Their appearances and yeah. things like that. I mean, it's nonstop. So yeah. I'm like, you can have that. Mm. So when when Blake and I really met for the first time was when he was, was doing his, like, international touring with these groups. And so initially i thought oh i could ride his coattails a little bit like, you know some people but well that was actually i'm glad you brought that up because after transitioning out uh doing the tech thing i actually thought about you know because i met some i, I established some uh, relationships with uh some of the contacts with i don't know interscope and things like that and i was thinking well maybe i can use these contacts and maybe i can actually pursue something yeah mm-hmm. and then I just decided no. I mean, I think obviously, I think too, God had another plan for me just to stay here. And I just felt called. I just needed to be grounded because yeah. being on the road, it's, it is a hard life. And then it kind of, 
you feel you're alone, even though you have people around you. Yeah. Um, I think part of that was was <laughs> tugging on me. Yeah, as I, have well. good, I have a good friend of mine who's been on tour for 19 years now. Wow. Yeah, so. it's a different life. That's hard. Yeah, he'll call me every once in a while and wants me to fly out just to see him. Just so yeah, mm-hmm. just can, so just so you can see yeah. him. Yeah, it's yeah. really good They've money. It's you. just you know, it's you just get away. What's important? Yeah, yeah. What's what's more valuable? You know. So. I had that same intersection with the NBA. They called me and I was like, yeah. it's too much traveling. Yeah, it's just too much. Games. I think I'm out. We're not talking about the National Basketball that. Association, are we? <laughs> <laughs> what would it, I don't even know what it would be. Are you going to be a mascot or are you going to be a... I am the mascot. <laughs> <laughs> National Biggins of America. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, needed a, they needed a vendor to go up and down the stairs. <laughs> Like the soda, the cotton candy. I couldn't make like, it up one flight of stairs. I'd be like, I'm exhausted. And I would drink like all the drinks just yeah, to go up. Yeah. I'm exhausted. I'm just paying for my own. Just taking out of my paycheck. <laughs> um, so what is, thinking back, what's one of the things that, and both of you answered this question, what's one of the things that if you could do it back over again, what would it be? Like something that you're like, oh man, I really kind of. Just in general or in our music lives? In your, in your music lives. Hmm. That's a good question. I have always wondered what, what would have happened if I would chosen to do professional music earlier. Um, I, you know, you asked about if we'd ever considered America's Got Talent. Well, when American Idol was like mm-hmm. a really big mm-hmm. deal, you know, there, I, I think probably I was asked, I don't know, 75 times a season if I was going to try out. And um, I was never really interested in it. And now there are things like The Voice and like mm-hmm. things that are, I think, even cooler shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I've, always, I've always been curious if I was good enough. Hmm. But that would be the only reason I'd try out. Not really because I'd want to do it, and not really because I'd want to make music my career. But but I don't even think that any of those people that really come out and shine afterwards, though. You know, you know, like yeah, like think, Danny Gokey. Who's that guy? Wow. Or like uh, the, 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 he records Christian music now. Oh, that's right. Well, there you go. Now, now so we know. boom. But like but like, like the season one, that guy? the season one winner of The Voice. I don't. Real, real good looking black guy always had the color coordinated hats with his outfits. Mm. No. Exactly. No one remembers But that. I'm sure like yeah. somewhere he's making hand over fist. Well, probably making some money somewhere. He's, he's probably he's, he's probably even better than Rice Cerrone, I'm sure. Probably. Yeah, I mean, I but like, like there are one hit wonders on the radio right now that I can't tell you their names, you know, so it's like, yeah, I don't true. know. So I don't know if I really regret it. I think it's more, I would just, I'm just curious, you know, I would just, right. be, I would just be curious to know. What would have happened? What would have I, I happened? I still think you can do the voice. I don't think there's an age limit on that. There we go. You wait till you're 72. <laughs> no, I think That's I'm dying when plan. I'm 72. Isn't that what we were talking about? Uh, <laughs> Somebody's dying. Blake, Blake, what what do you regret? I don't. I wouldn't say I really have any regrets. It's more of the curiosity of what yeah. if. Yeah. Because music's always going to be a part of me, you know. Because you know, I used to uh, do music professionally at, at a church. Or was it paid staff as a music director? Uh, and I'm still involved doing that at One Life. And I actually get more enjoyment of just volunteering and just doing it, you know, just because I love music. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's kind of, you know, the reason we did Lenny is, um, well, at least for me, is have another outlet to be able to... Creative expression. Creative expression, even though we're not doing, you know, our own songs. But we're kind of changing it up and doing yeah. our own thing. And... Um, but I, honestly, I, I've done pretty much everything that I hoped and <laughs> wanted to do. I mean, I, I went to school for music. I did what I was, I went to school for, and I did that for, you know, five years or so. And ha- I didn't, I, I had no plan on traveling and doing the whole thing. It kind of just fell in my lap. And it's one of those opportunities. It's, it's an opportunity of a lifetime to travel the world, you know, on somebody else's dime. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've 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 gone back and I've said, you know, what if I did American Idol and what if, I, you know, I, just to see, I don't know, maybe maybe that'll change, you know, just to see how well I did. But I think some of it is fear. I think uh, I, I've always had a, a fear of like, well, what if I go up there and I go to American Idol and I'm like one of the guys they make fun of on right, the TV show. Right. Or what if all of a sudden I'm not nearly as good? You know, you always see those people oh, yeah. that try out. They're like, oh, their parents really encourage them. You know that they were probably the yeah. best person in their 50 person town. But like, they're, you know, they're the reason why there's participation. Yeah. Trophies. So then, yeah. So then I think, oh I got boy, enough of am those. I a, participa- a no. participation trophy or am I, 
you know. Yeah, so, not at all. It, I curiosity. would be honest with you enough to tell you, like, no, you should. No, not I'm do sure that. that you would. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, you're good enough. <laughs> you know, one thing. I just, just sitting here, I realized, like, all of us have been in like church work. That's what I was yeah, about to say too. Have, yeah. You know, and, and the reason why I left, and and this is totally off the topic of Lenny, the band, uh, is just because just the church people and mm. just dealing with the the crap that 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 all brought. It wasn't yeah. the kids. It wasn't you know my relationship with God, but it was just like. The politics. The politics. Very political. The, yeah. Christ, the Very Christianese political. is what made me. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't speak that language. So. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize that until, until just now. Yeah. Well, interesting. Yeah. But, but we're all back, you know. Right. So it's kind of, it's kind of yeah, a redeeming joy and grace. And I enjoy it more. More, more now than the, when you're paid. Oh, yeah. 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 I mean, I'm and I'm still involved in different ways, too. Not even just at, at Kinetic. I was... You know, this past weekend was at the Carolina Christian Youth Conference, and I'm on their board of directors. So, nice. Um, but it's it's different, you know. It's, yeah, it's fun. I mean, not that not that working in youth ministry wasn't fun, but um, doing something 24 hours a day can get a little. <laughs> well, you get your Sundays back. You know? Oh yeah, yeah that yeah, was awful, back. wasn't it? Oh gosh. Like, oh, but you guys aren't. I mean, what, who does Sunday night church really? Like, come on, people. Nobody goes like in the morning. Still a lot of places do that. Yeah. We got Wednesday night Bible study. Wednesday and night. Sunday night. We had like Bible a Monday Bowl. night Bible study at my mom's <laughs> house, and then we had like Wednesday back at church. Yes. Yeah, we were so at, much. we were at church all the time. When so I and much. I loved it when I was a when I was a kid, but as an adult, you're like, man, can I just have my own life? Y'all don't need that much Jesus. I'm just I don't know how to do all this. <laughs> well, I think also, like I said, from from my personal mm. standpoint, the it was the people. Yeah, you know, just the the. Um, the faults expectations and uh just just yeah. the time and period and in the regional area i was at was just not mm-hmm. a not a good con, con, uh, conform fit for me but i'm just glad to be back now in some capacity at least attending some. yeah and I, well and i'm sure a lot of a lot of your listeners can relate to that mm-hmm. um and, and anybody in any industry just getting burned mm-hmm. by anything yeah um i mean people are people no matter what industry you're in that's right so, uh, what's been the best part of Lenny the band so far? Like, uh, you guys I want to hear your answer before I answer. <laughs> uh, I would say just meeting different interesting people. I mm-hmm. think just uh, I think I wouldn't said I wouldn't have said that you know early on, but you know as we've uh, been playing out more, uh, we've gotten to know the different people, especially like the managers and owners and things like that. Yeah, uh, that's been really cool to build a relationship with them. And obviously, you know, it shows because they've asked us to come back. That's cool. Not necessarily because we're talented or anything like that, <laughs> but just because they got to know us and that we're easy to work with. Yeah. I would say that we're probably easy to work with. Yeah. And we put part. on a good show. So we tried to. Yeah. They get their money's worth. Oh what, yeah. What's been your favorite part? <laughs> I think my favorite part has actually uh, been um, just playing with Blake. It's, oh, that's I know that. That's why I wanted you to answer first. I don't want you to talk <laughs> me for my answer. Mine so, was fl- playing with Kate. Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Change my mind. We can edit um, that out. No, I think it's it's um you you rarely have opportunities. I mean, you guys, I'm sure, can even comment on what your relationship has become since you've started doing the podcast. Yeah, but it pretty much hates me. I, I hate it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like much. I go through periods. I go through periods of intense love and hatred, all in about 15 minutes when we're yeah. playing the gig. I mean, like. <laughs> You know, it's the crap yeah. out of me, but it's all, I think it's, I think it's really Your fun. right now. This <laughs> is like, wait, what? <laughs> oh, he knows. Oh, he knows. This is nothing new. All right. So top, top, uh, top three breweries in the mm. Charlotte area. We don't even have to say that we played them either. My top three? Is, that, oh, is it top, we, is three, it top three, three that we played at or, or top, top three, three that we played at? Oh, drink. Oh, Wooden Robot, hands down, is my Wooden favorite Robot. in yeah. Charlotte. Hands down. Huh. And, what, and what, and what beer? Uh, good morning, Vietnam. Mm. I like uh, Triple C is my favorite. I like mm. the light rail. Um, second would probably be Wooden Robot. I like their stout. I don't know what it's called. Stout. Stout. <laughs> it's called stout. Stout one. Stout wood. They got like 65 and They change them all the time. So. <laughs> Third one, I don't... Um, I'm, I'm actually really enjoying Cabarrus Brewing. Just right yeah, down, Cabarrus right down the street. Yeah. I love that. I, I, I'm sad. I'm sad I left Concord after, oh, you know, yeah. like it's crazy good. Yeah. I think Blake's going there after I'm this. At, I'm actually. Going after right that a boy. Yeah. I might have to, too, with the kids. Uh, and, and just one. a, uh, 
throwback to Southern Grace Distilleries, the, the latest podcast, um, their uh, bourbon barrels are being used now at Cabarrus oh, Brewery. Oh, so yeah. We love, we love bourbon barrel. I, I love bourbon barrel beer. Yes, sir. All right, so Katie, your, your other two. Um, well, it's not not quite a brewery, but I really love um, Three Spokes. Um, or bro- Broken Spoke. What am I talking mm. about? Broken Spoke. Um, the whiskey distillery. Mm. <laughs> No, that's, that's not beer. Yeah. I know that's what I said. I mean, they have beer there. It's a drinkery though. It's, but I it's not beer. really like liquor. I like liquor. Um, and then let's see what's like another liquor. one that I really love. Um, I always feel like Sycamore has good stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, we've played at Sycamore before, and if it's Blake crazy. chooses to comment on Sycamore, he can. But um, it's just so many <laughs> things, people, dogs. Running group, hot breath, yoga, everything, hot breath, just it's, people, or just all, all on top. Of you. Yeah, mm. yes, all that. Yeah. Wow. Just speaking of wooden rhubarb, have you tried the uh, the Korean restaurant, Korean uh, the soul food meat market? Yes. Is that the one that's like right? They bring across? you everything on your cafeteria yeah. trays or whatever. Yeah, that's where we went for my birthday. So, so we like delicious. to we like to go to Price's Chicken, like around oh, the corner, yeah. and grab Price's. just a big old box of chicken and go to yep. Wooden Robot. In fact, I think we're doing that on Friday with some of our friends. Yeah, oh, with Heather. One of, our, one, of our, one of our first episodes we had, we mentioned Price Chicken Coops there because I think they mm-hmm. were in the top, they were the top chicken joint in all of Charlotte for uh, that's great fried chicken. So yeah, are you allowed to say these? Are these if these people aren't sponsoring you, are you allowed to talk about them on air? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't oh yeah, they, we it's wish free they advertisement would. for them. <laughs> we wish they would sponsor us yeah. anytime. Mm, but you know, all unfor- the fried livers you want. <laughs> but fried, fr- you know what? Price's Chicken Coop doesn't need any advertisement. You're they, right. They, they don't. I mean, it's cash you, only. They have a one-page website, yeah. and they're still. <laughs> hey, we should be cash fine. only. We should oh, be yeah. cash only. That's yeah. right. Lenny Uncle should Sam. be cash only. That's right. Uncle Sam don't need any more of that. Nah, we're all right. Do you have any more questions? I did. <laughs> so we're up. You should write these down from now on. Let me tell you. Can I, I tell you a story? Yeah, 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 tell us a story. Okay. Um, we have a couple. We have a couple of. <laughs> we have a couple of good stories. Um, things that have happened to us when we've been out playing, and one of one of my favorites was really like a sweet and an awkward thing that happened all at the same time. <laughs> was this recently? No, this. No, no, no. Not okay. that one. Okay. You can tell that story though. That's a good one too. That uh, sounds a lot like the girls I asked out in high school. Someone proposed and gave birth at the same time. <laughs> yeah, same time, same yeah. person too. It's sweet and awkward. Yeah, so we were at um, we were playing out in Ballantine at a like a tap room. I already know what you're gonna say. Growlers, Growlers USA. We were out oh, playing. Oh, this was good. This was really good. <laughs> and um, we uh, were. It, it was. A, I think it was a week. Was it a weeknight? Yeah. It, it was w- not it very was, busy. It, Whatever it, day it was, it was not very busy. I, I don't know what story you're telling then. <laughs> <laughs> it was not very busy. Um, we played through maybe two hours of our set, and all of a sudden, all these people started walking in and okay, like okay. in like nice clothes, I was thinking a different like. One. And we looked behind us at one point. There's a window behind us. We looked behind us. There's like a limo mm. driving by. Now, this is not in like an area where there's like a lot of fancy restaurants. It's not prime time. It's it not, prom not prime time. time. It, it, yeah. Oh, yeah. It wasn't prom time. And these were not high school students. These were all adults. We were like, what in the world is going on? We just keep playing because, yeah. I mean, we don't know mm-hmm. what else to do. So, right. And they start coming in and they start standing up and filling up all these tables. And we're just playing through, just mm. doing our thing. And um and we get toward the end of our set. Well, and they also had turned on the TVs to the Red Sox game, which I was totally into because they're my favorite team. Oh, so wow. we were watching the Red Sox game kind of out of the corner of our eye. All these people were watching the Red Sox game, too. We're like, OK, well, they just came here to watch the game. This is, a, you know, they play a lot of sports here. <laughs> um, and then we get to the end. And because it's the Boston Red Sox, um, Blake's like, hey, let's sing Sweet Caroline. You know, mm. to Neil Diamond, and, nice. and I was like, "Yeah, that's fine, man." And so we we start going into it. We get all the crowd participation; they're into it, and we are totally happy with that. Um, and then it was a great way to end the set. Um, I finish up, we start unpacking, and I have wa- I walked to like the back of the restaurant, use the restroom, and the lady stopped me on my way back, and she's like, "Hey, I just want to let you know." All of the people that are here dressed up, um, we just came from my father's wake. Oh, my wow. dad, my dad died like two days ago. Wow. They're all here for his wake. 
we came over here to watch the Red Sox game. And Neil Diamond was his favorite singer, and Sweet Caroline was his favorite song. She's really? like, I was going to ask you if you would sing wow. one of those songs. Nice. So I, my, I mean, my jaw's on the floor. Yeah. I was like, we were not intending to do any of that. We were just. So you, guys, so you just guys, you guys just made someone, someone a memory. Yeah, yeah. So we said, you know, I said, I'm, I'm really glad that we could be a part of that for you. But it was wow. also kind of like, yeah. oh boy, <laughs> kind of like, eerie. Yeah. We're never going to be able to play this song again yeah. without Nothing. like thinking of this. Yeah. So that yeah. for me, I think was. A, just sort of an interesting and we've had a lot of interesting yeah people. i thought you were going to talk about it seems like most of our interest our most interesting stories come from growlers and valentine how oh, are you going <laughs> to tell the one about the tip yeah Whoa. so this is good that's a good one so this was not on a weeknight no this was, this on was a, a week, saturday yeah, it was on a weekend so it was really busy and we had a uh gentleman who was maybe had a couple drinks <laughs> he kept asking me to play this specific song i'm not gonna give it away right away but uh he said he would give me 17 dollars <laughs> specifically he would give us 17 dollars we'll yeah whatever he had in his jar. pocket he had it cash i'll give you 17 dollars to sing time of my life mm. dirty dancing, dirty dancing. And, oh, and it boy. crossed my mind i'm like oh man i don't know mm. like we don't, I was like, like we don't really don't request. but i was thinking 17 bucks <laughs> i could sing like a minute and a half of this and make the quickest 17 bucks mm-hmm. in my life so we we take a break. I go out to the parking lot, bring my my guitar, and I'm like, "All right, looking on my cell we phone." We find a key that works. Mm-hmm. Yeah, looking on my cell phone, look for chord chart and all that <laughs> jazz, and uh, ended up kind of fudging through it. Mm-hmm. And you know, I could have made up the we, words. Yeah, all we I went, needed to go is "Time of my life," <laughs> and that's all. We went back Nailed in it. and sang like two verses and a chorus. Yeah, and he's like. Woo! It was so fun, and then they left right after. They like dropped the money and like yep. walked out. We're yep. like, okay, well, we have good songs too. Yeah. So from <laughs> from that later. some from that point on, you know, it's kind of like a ongoing joke that you know, hey, we'll take requests for seventeen dollars. Anybody <laughs> seventeen bucks? That's our yeah, minimum. That, that's, that's our minimum. minimum. <laughs> yeah. That Sometimes we we get requests and they're like spot on. We're like, oh yeah, we have that in the set actually. Or frequent. Why this happened for a little while last summer? I feel like everywhere we went. People wanted to pick our song list. They would like go through. We have an yeah, I'm iPad. Like, this is not. And they would, like, flip through our songs. This is not karaoke. Like, no. Like we'll play what you know. Like, oh my oh, gosh. Play. Sometimes we actually kind of going on serious <laughs> on a serious note. We actually put a lot of time in picking the songs. We, we do. don't. We're not just going to do anything. We're going right. to. We're going to do what works for us, and we kind of kind of make it our own. We're not going to do you know just. We're not. We haven't found a Skinner song yet that we're going to do. I was about to ask you, you don't have Free Bird on your <laughs> yeah. We don't have Free Bird. I can't do the eight-minute solo. I just can't do it. Oh, my gosh. His hands are just It just becomes real he awkward. He'll lose his mind. I'm just, yeah, my arm. And what yeah. am I going to do? Just sit there and stare, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna, stare at mm-hmm, you. Mm-hmm, do a mm-hmm, mm-hmm. snap. We'll just do the radio on. edit. I mean, the radio edit's like 342. Three yeah. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Wow. I uh-huh. have to preface by radio edit. Here we go. <laughs> That's right. So, mm-hmm. you know, when, we, when we're when we doing, uh, frequently when we're going out, we're playing anywhere between a two and three hour set. And depending on what it's like, it's like and depending marathon. on how many people want to interact with us while we're up there, which is sometimes not very often, we can play, you know, 40 songs in a wow. night. So we have a, a bank of stuff. We have, we've gone through and figured out what songs have really worked for us. And even, you know, even the song Budapest that you played earlier, we have completely changed that now, what we're doing live. Oh yeah. We, we have a bluegrass it. version of it. We have blue, oh, yeah. Nice. So, you know, we've changed quite a bit of it and we'll continue to because Blake's favorite thing is to. Oh, you're going to switch it up. He ha- he surprises me. All I do the time. a lot of songs in he Spanish just, like, now. Changes. <laughs> he just no, changes things. <laughs> and I, and I, at this point I can follow along, but like, the last, we played a gig just a couple of weeks ago, and in the middle of the gig, he reached over and just poked me in the face. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> just making sure you're awake. Just switch it up. I love it. So. it that, that's a question. So. Is like, how do you keep things fresh if you're playing the same 40? But uh, there you go. Well, <laughs> in the face. we're actually, yeah. we have rehearsal Saturday, Saturday, and we got about 12, 13 songs we're yeah. going to try out. Dozen we songs. like to test them out first and see if it's actually going to work, but we're gonna we got a whole new... To be able to, yeah, repertoire. Mm -hmm. And I I would say that we, I don't know, during our busiest times during the summer, we would do, um, you know, once a month we'd we'd add in three new songs or something. So there's always something something fresh. Yeah, now we're we're gonna add a whole. Have you heard of a Have you heard of a punk rock collaboration band called Me First and the Gimme Gimmies? 
Oh, what I the? can't see. Yeah. You got you got to look them up, and their their motto is "We uh, making bad music not suck." Mm, that's mm. good. And they're they're cut. They it's all covers, and uh, it, literally they, every song they they choose it's stuff that really sucks in the eighties. They make <laughs> oh, it sound okay. awesome now. There's we no started doing a bunch of eighties 80. songs that we've we've been changing up, yeah. and they've been really good. So, um, we I mean we're an acoustic duo we can't do a whole lot right but what we really can do um blake built a kick drum so we have a kick drum he has a harmonica that he brings along out of suitcase yeah um and his guitar and then we have our two vocals so um harmonica and the thigh thigh cymbals you got the thigh cymbals oh yeah (laughs) and the shaker and i sometimes snap into the microphone and that really (laughs) that really adds a lot yeah Yeah. (laughs) so we, uh, we, um, what's, the, what's the thing that you put in your mouth? They're like, oh, oh jaw, the heart. jaw heart. Yeah. Oh, I should get one of those. Oh, I can't feel half of my face, though, so I'm not really sure if a jaw harp would do anything for me. But um, <laughs> but maybe not. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Smack my face over and over again. Maybe um, that's why he's trying to poke you in the face. It's a new symbol. I'm not, yeah. You guys, I'm not kidding. I, I spend most of most of our set making sure I don't laugh. That's, I mean, that's what it is for three solid hours is Blake just like Blake is being Blake. We played we played a um, a Christmas party uh, a oh, couple yeah. months ago. And these people knew for Blake. Hanukkah. Yes, for Hanukkah. Yeah. Christmas party for Hanukkah. And um, these people knew Blake. So he spent the entire first hour dressed in a head to toe reindeer costume. Yeah, well, well wait. Sunglasses on. I did not mean to be beard. dressed for the first hour. You're right. You're right. It I was, was supposed, supposed to, to only be for 15 minutes. You meant you're to right. be naked the entire time? I was actually the, naked. The, the reveal was supposed underneath to be thing. sooner. Mm. And um so I mean so that's he was like throwing his voice and like I was just sitting over there they don't know me. <laughs> so I'm just sitting over there trying to like act like I'm being serious and Flex over there in a giant reindeer costume. Just sweating <laughs> profusely. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> you were gross that night. Yeah. Mm. I didn't I did not want to stand next to you. Yeah. You were just like dripping off. That's of him. hilarious. It nice. was pretty. I mean so we spent a lot of time laughing. And I think that that's probably why this is that's my favorite thing. Because Continue doing it, yeah. It's like Well, I think the good news good. from this is that no matter not not saying you guys are like old and ancient, but you guys started out, you know, with, with kind of the down the musical path and mm-hmm. then kind of your I guess careers took a different kind of path and now you're back doing what yeah. you love so yeah. you know hopefully someone can take that yeah. that listens to it because our pretty much our demographics are people from 25 to to 45 is I think seems to be our our mm. heavy traffic right. and there's people I mean just never give up on what you want to do so right and we've I mean Blake and I could probably spend hours talking about the obstacles that we've walked into you you had mentioned earlier I've had I think 20 surgeries on mm. my mouth and wow. on my jaws and I've had my jaws completely broken and reset and I, I don't go you know a year without having to have something done a, right. a bone graft or something I just have really it's a long story but I was <laughs> dropped on my head when I was a baby <laughs> that explains well that. yeah that makes sense yeah. Yeah. yeah so we both run into things and and um it's good that there's um there's still redemption right around the corner oh absolutely um and that there's still there's still an outlet yeah. It's like we're not in professional music. I mean, we're not. I mean, like we make oh, we're we make money, right. sure, but like we're not professional. You guys are enjoying it, and it's we all love matters. it. Yeah, yeah, it's been really. Like fun. you said, you wanted five gigs and you ended up doing forty. So I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, obviously, you weren't begrudging doing already, the other thirty-five. We've already done more in the first two months than we ever, you know, meant to do last year alone. So wow, that's um, awesome. Zach, Zach told me my husband told me that I should come on the podcast and break up with Blake. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, fine. you should come and tell him that Lenny's over. That's fine. <laughs> and we're done. But we're gonna rename it. It Benny. was really good, and now we're done. Now we're gonna call it Katie. We're gonna call it. We're gonna call it the Benny Hens. And I'm gonna stand there just by myself because I don't s- have a guitar. I'm gonna sing by myself a cappella. <laughs> you, should, you should name your dog your last name of your dog Hen. That way, you call it Lenny Hen. Lenny Hen. There you go. Yeah. A parody of Benny Hen. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Lenny. Well, right. or, how, how would uh, if anyone? Because we do have a large audience here in Charlotte Concord. Um, Cabarrus Rowan County. So, um, how, if anyone wants to get in touch with you guys for any events, how where would they go to? Uh, www.lennythebandcom and you can email us at lennythebandinfo <laughs> at gmail.com. Yeah, that's a long email. I was making sure. Well, Lenny the band. That one wasn't was taken. Yeah, Lenny you can contact info. us through the website. And we have or an Instagram sound clips and Facebook. And yeah, every all of our, I guess, what do they, what do they call this? Handles. Yeah. Oh yeah. 
Like we got handles. We play all over, <laughs> all over Charlotte and the surrounding area and the suburbs. So. It's all Lenny the Band at Lenny the Band. Everything. Mm-hmm. So I don't think a whole lot of people wanted that one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lenny Kravitz. He's about it. Yeah. And there you go. There you go. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you coming on the show Absolutely. today. Absolutely. Thank you. Yeah. All and right. also, you guys. Actually, you guys do have a gig coming up. March seventeenth, which would Patty's be Saint Day. Patty's Day. So wear your green. We're playing at Temple Mojo out in Matthews. It's a cool oh, little, that, cool Mojo. little joint. Temple Mojo. Um, yeah, just for you. We did it just for you. Where, where, where's that at? Uh, it's in the Main Drag in, in Matthews. Okay. Um, yeah, and then we're playing Seaboard in April. It's 7th. neighbor. Yeah. What, so. Which they're all owned by the same people. It's like a monopoly of hmm. beer joints. But it's great. <laughs> maybe maybe Trump, we, maybe Donald like Trump will break up the monopolies of this bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he will drain the swamp. That's right. Um, <laughs> Drain the Cheetos. <laughs> Cheeto swamp? <laughs> oh, that sounds awesome. delicious. I'll take He's that. swimming that in it. That good. <laughs> he is Trump. swimming in it. A pool of Cheetos. How much, how much orange do you think goes all the way down? Like, you got his face, but then like... Oh, no. Ooh, it's got to stop know. above his collar, because you would think. otherwise you'd see it. You would think. I think I think it goes all the way down to his uh, shoulders. shoulders. He yeah. probably has like a like a helmet that comes <laughs> over it and just... <laughs> whoosh, you put, just goes like over his... Astronaut. Instead of being cryogenically yeah. frozen, it's just... <laughs> Orange, Cheeto. Orange, Cheeto-genically. Yeah. Cheeto-genically. I like it. Let's coin that. <laughs> got it. All right. Do you guys have time for a, a quick uh, game? Sure. Yes. We got uh, ten for ten and one. So we're going to ask you ten questions in under a minute. But because it's two of you, we'll give you like two minutes. So. Oh, do we have to answer at the same time? No, you can answer separately. Or whoever's want. first. Do I need to buzz in? No, you'll just one will go and one the other one will go. <laughs> there okay. is there is no grand we're prize. We're trying to make this more complicated. Yeah, than we're very competitive. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. Lenny Kravitz or Lenny Cooper? Lenny Kravitz. Kravitz. Uh, favorite brand of guitars? Gibson. Mm, Takamini. Uh, dream vacation locations? Um, I don't... Red you're Nick going Riviera. to Banff for your honeymoon. I went to Australia for my honeymoon. Those are pretty good. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't... What? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to open for who? Ooh. Oh, boy. <laughs> Shovels and rope. Uh, oh, 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 Head and Heart. Head and Heart. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. What's the last TV show you binge watched? Ooh. Oh, uh, 30 Rock. Walking Dead, because I had to catch up. Mm. <laughs> what are you looking forward to most in 2017? More gigs. Blake's gig. <laughs> Katie. Blake's Katie. Katie. Singing with Katie. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Blake's getting married. I think that that's so probably. Oh, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting married. That's and it. I'm going to Canada. <laughs> What are you looking forward to in 2017? <laughs> Not getting married. All right. Uh, Waffle House or IHOP? Waffle House. <laughs> <laughs> also Waffle House. Uh, best gig so far? Oh, I don't uh, know. We've had a lot of really good ones. Best gig. Oh, I'm trying to go through my Rolodex. I can't even remember what I ate yesterday. I, honestly, I think when we played at the Renaissance in South Park the last time, you know, there, there were so many people there. It I think really my good. favorite one was the beer walk at... The Botanical the hur- Gardens. In the Hurricane. That's yes. when we played in Hurricane. Mm, That's hurricane yes. and Hurricane. All right. Favorite style of music? Um, folk, folk Americana. Yeah. Folk, yeah. Folk Americana. All right. Last question. What is your spirit food? Oh, tacos. Spirit food? <laughs> I would oh, say part here. of my heart is made of tacos. <laughs> I would say mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes. Also, can we have a just do-over? That. That's dumb. Because my favorite brand of guitar is not Takamini. It's just all I could think of. <laughs> okay, you can you can get another one. <laughs> uh, I don't play guitar. I don't really know. The egg shaker. Yes. A ukulele. The wooden one. <laughs> the wood. <laughs> and then Blake's do-over is that he really isn't looking forward to getting married this year. Thanks, Lindsay. Shout out. <laughs> yeah, I am looking forward to. I don't know. It was quick. I felt no pressure. <laughs> That's why I said Takamini. <laughs> All right. Well, guys, thank you so much for being on the show. That's another episode of Southern Fried Philosophy Podcast. You can check us out at Google Play, uh, iTunes, and Stitcher. And thanks again for tuning into the show. And as always, keep it rolling.